Hello everybody, happy Global Wellness Day on this June 12, 2021. My name is Dov Peng, I'm the Founder and Managing Director of Green Wellness Malaysia. When we first started nine years ago, we had only one very simple objective, that is to make sure that all the products sold by Green Wellness Malaysia are non-toxic and healthy. In other words, they has to be good and safe that can help feel and help build the physical well-being for anybody from baby to everyone in the entire family. This simple objective then form our company name, Green Wellness, which means toxic free and a pursuit of activities, choices and lifestyle that leads to the state of holistic health. This is why we are very proud to be part of the Global Wellness Day this year and can't wait to share with you more on our topic, mental resilience for anyone at any time. And because mental wellness recognizes the integrated and holistic nature of our health and the well-being, the condition of our mind affects the body and likewise the body affects our mindset. In good times and in bad times, we need to build the mental strength, face and overcome any problem and challenges, big or small, and not to suffer in silence, but to make a very conscious effort and also to work and strive towards a beautiful tomorrow. To have a more meaningful discussion on this mental strength in our topic, I think there's really no better way to have a chat with someone that has been there, done that, and through a real test on the willpower, yet excel and emerge as an outstanding inspiration to anyone else. And today, I'm very, very happy and very excited to be introducing my special guest, the Pride of Malaysia, the first Malaysian figure skater to qualify for the Winter Olympic in year 2018. He was also the first Malaysian to qualify for the Four Continents Figure Skating Championships, the first Malaysian to qualify for the Junior World Championship and World Figure Skating Championship, the winner of Inspiring Young Leader Award 2019, and also our SEA Games Gold Medalist, for the year 2017 and 2019. So ladies and gentlemen, darling in all the way from Canada, please help me welcome Mr. Julian Yi. Hi Julian, Hi, Dor. how are you? Hi, Dor. So good to see I'm you. I'm good, you too as well. Thank you for all the kind words. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really good to have you here. I know it's like um, 12 hours apart. We are, we are like 12 hours yeah. apart. So it's a morning it for us <laughs> and it's night time for you. It could be like midnight for you. Uh, so I'm, I'm so grateful for allocating this time for us. Thank you. No, thank you very much for having me. Well, um, looking at you, this very young man, but you have actually achieved <laughs> so much. And um, you're just 24 years old. I hope it's okay to review your age. Yeah, because... that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> have to be proud of it. <laughs> yes, yes. That's why I'm very, very curious. How did it all happen? You know, when was there like any... Um, any special event that got you started in the first place? Wow. Um, so my, in, in terms of my skating career, it, it dates back 20 years ago. Um, I've started figure skating at age of four, um, not, by, not by choice because I had no clue what I was doing. Right? My mother was the one who brought me to the ice ring. Um, we started it as like a, a family activity. And then before I knew it, I started with competitions ready and... A few years down the line, I, I decided to keep going and pursue this uh, figure skating sport um, as a competitive career and, and tried to make a career out of it. And it was actually not when I was too young. And by that, I meant like four or five or six years old. I, I, I think the, the turning point for me to, to decide when I wanted to really go with this uh, was probably when I was maybe... 12, 13 years old, thereabouts, um, where I, I competed one day uh, at a big international competition in Asia, and um, I realized how how much I lacked behind the rest of the world in skating, and that made me want to push myself and see how far I can go and, and you know put up a, a competition, at least some sort of a fight with my competitors instead of always coming last. So you actually yeah. started skating at four. And started yeah. competing at five. Wow, at yes. that tender age. <laughs> but then, but then to prepare for a competition, 
that was that like a serious stuff or it was just recreational for you at that time, you know, at that young age? Um, I think definitely at that age, it was just for fun. Um, like every other child out there, they just want to have fun, play with friends and all that. So um, when I competed at five, it was merely just for the fun of it to join. Uh, the rest of the skaters were competing so that you're not left out. And the, pretty much my early years in skating was was very much like that, uh, uh, just mostly for the fun of it, ah, for the experience and all that. Right, yeah. right. So even at that age, there's still some kind of peer pressure, yeah? <laughs> because you yeah, you know, you kind of want to always join in with your friends and not feel right. left out. So there's always that that small little bit there. Right, but even though it's like recreational, it's for fun. You still have to prepare for the competition. Is is the real stuff, right? They're still grading you. They're still marking yeah. your every move. So so in order to prepare for the competition, how do you prepare? How how do you train? Do you train like a lot, a long hours a day? I I think when, when I was younger at, at those recreational competitions, no doubt, like you mentioned, it's recreational. It's still a competition in the uh, in the end of the day. There's always a winner and someone who unfortunately has to be the person who comes last. So everybody strives to be the best. Um, and and that where that's where it separates those who really want it and those who just want to have fun and you know just okay if I lose I lose that's fine. Um, so in, in that sense the more effort you put in, the results will show a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, at that point of time, it wasn't too long hours of training, mm -hmm. uh, especially at the very start. It was just maybe two two times, three times a week of skating, mm -hmm. um, each time maybe an hour, two hours at right. max. Right. And then as the years went by, it got more and more and more and more. Ah, right. Okay. So it was like, because even from 5 to 12 years old, it's still many years in, the, in between. So those, yeah. those were the days that you actually take part in recreational um, competition yeah. before you get really serious at 12 years old. Uh, yeah, I would say around 12. I mean, like 11, 12, I started joining the national championships mm -hmm. in Malaysia and all that. And, and that's when it started getting a bit more. Right. But um, yeah, like I said, every year it gets more and more from once a week to twice a week, three times a week, four times a week. And one time it was every single day of the week right. of, of uh, training. Yeah. Right, right. And then when, when like... Um, because in terms of training in Malaysia, Malaysia is not a winter country, right? There's no like like um, I think there's no proper facility. I was I was think, am I right? <laughs> yeah, un unfortunately, because uh, we are not as developed as other countries in figure skating, um, we, our rings are only in shopping malls and uh, it's shared with the public, so it's not really per se a training center. Uh, but we make do with what we have. Right. Right. But then in terms of what do you think is the biggest difference in terms of like Malaysia's facility as opposed to like, I know you went to like Canada for training at the same time. So what's the biggest difference you think? Um, I think facility wise is definitely the, the ice time that we get. So um, uh, as I mentioned, the rings back home, are in shopping malls, uh, whereas the rings, for example, in Canada, are all in training centers. So the environment itself of, of um, where you train makes mm -hmm. a huge difference. Okay. You know, uh, back home, we sometimes have to skate with the public. Here, you have the ice with other skaters only, so it's a little bit easier. Ah, yeah. okay. But in terms mm -hmm. of, like, equipment, is there any difference, you think? Um, with, with skates, I think the good thing about skating, the equipment, we, all we really need is our skates and our blades. Um, but what what are the differences that we do have, uh, for example, in Malaysia as compared to a more developed country are perhaps the coaching expertise. Uh -huh. um, because we are not as developed back home in Malaysia, uh -huh. maybe our coaches are not as experienced compared to um, other countries. But given the fact and situation that we're in, I think our coaches back home also, they do a good job with, right. with what we have. Yeah, yeah, with what they have to maximize what we have, right? That's Absolutely. also very yep, important. That's right. Yeah. Mm. And then, but then, you know, like all this, uh, there's a lot of limitation, obviously. You know, along the way, you could have just said, now there's nothing um, that, that helps me to, to move forward. And you could have just stopped, you know, just say, ah, it's not important. Nobody's, n nobody yeah. knows that I actually quit at this time. But, but instead of doing that, you keep moving forward. You keep going and going. Um, what is the drive behind that? Um, well, 
leading up to that, I think, uh, I'm not going to lie, there, there have been points where I felt like I just want to give up and just, you know, that's it, done. Let's, let's leave this, let's move on. Uh, but ultimately, I, I would come around to the point where, you know, I, I, I ask myself, why am I doing this in the first place? Right. There has to be a reason why I decided to go down this path and why I want to pursue it. Mm -hmm. And and once you're clear with the reason why, I think it it resets your mind and keeps you going again because you want it for yourself. So there's only one way to do it and you have to push yourself through it. Right. And before you actually you know reach the Olympics stage. Um, what's the reason that kept you going? Because it's really unknown, you know, or to be to be very frank. I think yeah. nobody knows yeah. whether where you end up. You're still moving as of today, but how at that time, what was on your mind? What was like the, the thinking that, that kept you going then? Um, I I felt that throughout my entire journey and, and career in skating, uh, it pretty much was a lot of baby steps for goals. So um I, I did not set to be uh, to qualify for the Winter Olympics from the very start. I just wanted to, you know, qualify for four continents and qualify for world championships. And every time I reached a small goal, I set a bigger one. Right. And uh, ultimately, it it came to the last checkpoint where you know Olympics is the next stage. Right. It's the next biggest thing that I can aim for and right. um, it came to that in the end. Right, right. I think that's that's fantastic because a lot of us sometimes we just want to jump and say that I want to achieve something really big and it's like I want to dream really big. It's important to dream big but at the same time yeah. it's the execution that matters, right? right. It's the baby step, yeah. steps and baby uh, success that keeps you going. I think that would be a very good advice for, uh, for our viewers and also a lot of young people nowadays. You know, it's important to actually know and try to find out what you like and enjoy at the same time. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Okay. But then, um, when you were like training and preparing for all this um, world competition, you were still studying. Uh, did that affect your study in any way? Uh, not quite. Not not too bad actually. It, it was not easy to to juggle and balance out. But um, I'm quite fortunate that, you know, since young, I have been training and studying. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of had an idea of how to manage my time right. and prioritize uh, whether studies or skating. Right. Um, so, yeah, it, it pretty much it, it was not too difficult, manageable, I would say, but still not the easiest. <laughs> yeah. So which one is your priority or what's your priority? <laughs> it really depends. It, everything is time sensitive, right? Yeah. The, the, that's one thing in life is that we cannot get back, and that's time. So depending on what is due first, for example, let's say if I have an assignment that I have to hand in, uh -huh. I try and get that done before going to the competition. All right. Uh, so that once I'm at the competition, I don't have to think about my assignment. I can focus 100% on the mm. competition. Right. So just strategically planning out what you have to do and and how you execute it. It really helps. A lot of planning, right. but it, it'll pay off. That's good. Knowing your priority and then do it. That's good. Yeah. But then, yeah. But then what about your friends? <laughs> you know, um, you know, your, your time is so limited. You, you already have time for studying assignment, pro exam, and then um, training and competition. Is there much left for friends and your social life? How was that during the teenage time? It was... <laughs> It was not easy, um, but again, I'm I'm very lucky to have friends who understand uh, my situation and they're very supportive as well. Yeah. So they understand if I'm not able to make certain uh, outings or you know certain hangouts. Um, but at the same time, if you're able to manage your time properly, there will be some time that you're able to to mix with friends and socialize. Uh, and ultimately, it's up to you. And there's one thing that I learn. Um, that's very important for me, I find, is that sacrifice. There's always a give and take in life. And uh, sometimes we can't have it all. So we just have to choose what we really want more. If you really want to reach your goal and you have to sacrifice a certain thing, right. um, that's how it is. Right. Yeah. That's true. That's very, very true. But then, is there any other struggle, you know, apart from, from what we just talked about, any, any other tr struggle or that's stopping you from like, proper training? Um, I would say the the biggest thing probably when I was training back home in Malaysia was just 
uh, the facilities, perhaps. Right. Um, like I said, I mean, um, we, we, we make do with what we have. We, we try to make the best out of it. But there comes a certain point of time where if you want to grow further and, and move up the ladder a bit more, uh, you have to make a decision and see, you know, what is beneficial for you and how you're able to achieve your goal. Mm. So, mm. yeah. Um. Can you like give us a little bit more of 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 that? And your goal, I know it's like baby step, but then your goal is just mm. from Malaysia out to the international competition, and then I move up to yeah. Olympics. And then, is there anything else from there? You think what what what's next coming for you? What's next? <laughs> That's a good question. I ask myself that too sometimes. <laughs> um, I think based because of the current situation we're all in. Um, with the pandemic and all that, I think a lot of us are struggling in not only in terms of uh, staying home and all that, but just on uncertainty of what we will face. So um, it's very fluid right now. I feel like the next step for me is to see uh, what I can do with what I've done so far in my journey of skating and how I can share that and give back to the community. Right. So um, I've been focusing on just trying to share my knowledge and um, you know, do some coaching as well, and then um, finishing up my my degree. I'm almost done, so okay. That that's the next few steps uh, in the near future. All right, that's that's great because I think we want to share with the audience you know, what's the reality like. You know, and even even for yourself, you know, the pandemic is there. Then how do you actually plan for your own? Um, that's moving forward because because um, um, I'm I'm also curious. Um, I was told. As a, as a figure skater, it's actually a very expensive sport. And um, to produce like an Olympic contestant uh, like yourself, uh, they could be looking yeah. at how much would, would, what, kind of, what kind of investment would they be looking at? You know? I'm sure a lot of youngsters will be looking up to you and say, I want to be like Julian one day. There, <laughs> there, uh, there is a, a huge, huge sacrifice there financially wise. Um, it's not as, and if you can look up Google and all that, they'll tell you one one season can cost up to, you know, uh, five digits at least. Wow. Um, for a, a proper competition season, because you're looking at competition expenses, flying, training, uh, for your coach and all that. So skating, unfortunately, is not perhaps maybe the most uh, budget friendly sport, but at the same time if there are more facilities open and it's you know, more and more people are into the sport, uh, it will help bring it down as well because then you have the numbers to play around with, mm -hmm. with skaters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but um, looking at, you know, at an Olympic level skater, yeah, they, it's not cheap, I would say. It right. can go up to about five, five digits a year. Right, right. But still, you yeah. think, you think um, like Malaysian that's interested in becoming a figure skater, you still encourage them to actually try pursuing that in Malaysia? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the the thing about, like, even for myself, in my case, is that, you know, um, it's it's not always smooth sailing for us. We, we had to um, look for a lot of support and sponsors and all that. And I was I was very, very lucky and fortunate to have so many people supporting me. Right. Um, and I'm very thankful for that. So if, even if there is some sort of barrier there, there's always a way to, to work around it and if you don't try you don't know right and what's what's important i find is you can only control what you do right and not what other people do so mm. you just have to give your best do what you can control and that's all okay everything will fall in place right because the control we're just going through just now like uh, you do your part and then you do your hard work you train and then you make sure that you are the best right then yeah. the rest um you try to find a support system Right. Yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> okay. right. Okay. Okay. And and talking about support system, what kind of support system do you think that that that's really uh, helping you a lot? The most important to you. I think having having a family that understands and and really gives a hundred percent to to help you in any way is is really important. Uh, my family have been great so far, and they've always been there for me. Um, Irregardless of, of uh, what it may be, and uh, like I said earlier, my, even my friends, the the skating community back home uh, is very very 
very helpful and you know they I think they, they want to see uh, as a nation as well to put Malaysia on the map of skating so that's that's a great thing and I'm, I'm very lucky for that. Can you tell me more like um, apart from the mental support is there anything um, specific thing that that touched you the most or what they did? Um, there's always there's one thing that that you know got me through this this tough part of, of my, my journey leading up to the Olympics right there. Um, uh, I had to qualify. I had a chance at qualifying it at the world championships, um, but unfortunately I missed it by one spot. Um, so that, that was quite, quite a bummer for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, there was a second um, opportunity to qualify and that was in uh, Germany in Oberstdorf. Right. And at that time there was only six spots left for the Olympics. Yeah. Right, and the Olympics, we only take 30 skaters. So during that time, for me, it was the make it or break it moment. Um, leading up to that was all my training, all the years of skating to that that one moment. And um, whenever I was stressed out or just you know not feeling it and doubting myself, I always had um, something I, I told myself. I feel self-talk is very important telling yourself you're good enough, telling yourself why you're doing it. Yeah. And and the phrase that came to me was, you know, if everybody believes in me, I have to believe in myself. And and that just got me going. So, you know what? Yeah, I have a whole bunch of people back home who thinks I can do it. So why can't I think the same? That's, yeah. that's a very important um, drive behind. But then um, six spots with 26 people, that kind of pressure, how, how do you handle that? How do you how do you actually face that pressure and then such an important event and you have so much on your shoulder? It it really was tough. Um, and and to add on to that, I also had a camera crew that was following me um, throughout that whole period of time because they were they were filming a little documentary mm-hmm. about um, athletes who are who are least um, who are how to say uh, not as uh, expected to qualify for Winter Olympics, so many athletes from tropical countries and all that. And they were really hoping that I would qualify because if I didn't qualify, all the video footage that they've done and following me around would have gone to waste. So I had that added pressure on me as well. Um, but I think because of training and, and what I've gone through so far, uh, when I was on the ice, uh, when I took my starting position to compete, um, it just everything just blacked out in my mind it was just focused on what I have to do on what the plan was and just get it done and execute it so uh, for me it was I think I was very lucky to have experience as well with competitions leading up to that that precious moment there yeah yeah 20 years <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's amazing 20 years of experience but then, then um, if we look back to the world championship that that um, you didn't qualify at that time. I'm sure you were, yeah. you were feeling very down. There are moments of like um, vulnerable time, like, like that moment. How, how do you actually keep, you know, kick yourself up and stand up and say that now I'm still, still going to move forward, charge forward and do what I have to do? Yeah, I mean, like, like what I've been, I've been doing for, for some time was like I said, just giving myself the reason why I started this in the first place. And then, you know, after like the world championships, yeah, I was not, you know, I was disappointed, but I accepted the fact that that that's the reality of things. You can't change what the results already are. You just have to push yourself and make sure it doesn't happen again. And for me, there are days where I feel like, you know, I I can't do this anymore. You know, I might as well give up. But then I, I, I think to myself, like I've done it. I've already come so far. There's no point in giving up now, right? You're you you're, you're almost seeing the light. The light is right there. You just gotta push a little bit more, and then you'll reach there. So really, it, it would have just been a waste had I given up at that time, and that's what kept me going. So it's the mental that's helping you in a way, you know, like at that moment, yeah. you just need that push from your own mindset. Yeah, yeah you, you need to create ways to tell yourself that you should keep going at it find whatever reason you have to make sure that you you see through what you set up to get. Yeah, yeah. But did you punish yourself? Did you like, Julian, you're not good enough, you know, you can't do this. Um, it's, there, there have been moments of doubt, 
right? right. Doubting yourself. I think that's very common with a lot of us. Right. Um, but in the end, there, it's funny because when you compete, you compete and people judge you, especially in skating. Right. But at the same time, we, we need to we need to have a, a separate mindset that, you know what, who cares of what people think? Right. Uh, you, you do you do it because you like it, you love it, you have the passion for it, and, and you just want to do it for yourself. So whenever you think if you're not good enough, then you think, who are you not good enough for? Because you're doing it for yourself. Mm. Right? So it's, it's funny. It's, it's a funny dynamic. But if you think of it that way, in the end, a lot of things that you do, um, especially if you really want to do it, it's because you do it for yourself. Right. And that might lead to helping someone else as well. But ultimately, you, the only one making you do it is yourself. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because instead of like beating yourself up, you know, just, just self-pity, why don't you do something, you know, make yourself feel good about yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah, make a you, change. I'm sorry? Make a change, you know, yeah. Exactly what you said. Right, right. But do you, do you like, because you, you're very strong, obviously, you know, you have very strong will, strong mind, and, and you're very clear in your objective. But then, you know, um, if sometimes, do you have to talk to any others like your family or probably your friends? Um, <laughs> good question. Uh, most normally, I would say I'm quite a, a personal person. So I like to keep things to myself. However, uh, there have been moments where, you know, it's, it's, that it's, I feel good that I'm able to share this with someone, whether it be my coach, my family, my friends. Um, it's not per se the best idea to keep everything to yourself. Uh, we have to know that there are people around us who, who want to help and will support us no matter what. So even if it's something that you're ashamed of or what, just talk to someone. It's, it's good to hear a second opinion. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a healthy way to, to let it out as well rather than keep it to yourself because in the end, it will drive you a little bit uh, out of your head. <laughs> so so if let, let's say that moment, you're like really, really panicked or struggled, just that short moment. Sometimes, you know, we are very calm throughout any condition, but mm -hmm. it's just that one moment that you're really stressed and struggle. Do you have like a mantra or a quick fix? Uh, how do you handle that, that moment? Uh, I think for me personally, I would just, I, I would pause everything, take a deep breath, take a step back mm. and assess the situation first. Okay. See what is actually going on. Because most of the time when we're in a panic mode or something that happens very sudden, right. uh, our, our mind doesn't register it yet. So let it sink in and then probably you'll know what to do after. But if you act just based on that panic, you don't know, uh, you can't really predict what's going to happen next. Mm, yeah, take yeah. a moment, take a deep breath. Yeah, take, a, yeah, take a, a deep breath. You got this, you know what you're doing, and then carry on. Right, right, right. That's good tips. You, you, you have like attained so much first uh, at this such a young age. How do you keep <laughs> like breaking through? Because it's, it's always, uh, you're getting better and better all the time. Um, how do you get, the, attain that, that greater heights, uh, one, one uh, achievement at one time? Um, <laughs> you know what's funny? It's, I, I never set out um, to be the first of this, first of that. It, I think for me, it was, it was it so happened, so happened that I was the first. Uh, but I never really had the thinking, of, okay, I want to be the first of this, first of that, and all that. Uh, for me, it was, it was similar like what I did with my goals. Everything was just step by step. And yeah, so I, I, I never really had the mindset of, okay, I want to be the first to do this, the first to do this. To me, it, it doesn't really matter to me that who's the first. Right. Uh, it, to me, it's, it's just more so of, okay, if you want to do it, get it done. That kind right, of thing. right, right. But then it's, it's yeah. a lot of uh, baby achievements that drive you to where you were uh, in 2018. Mm -hmm. But then do you think you are a perfectionist in, in any way? <laughs> I, I like to tell myself that I'm not, <laughs> but sometimes there are people who tell me that I am. So it's maybe a, in a very gray area. Uh, there are certain things, I guess it, it really depends on what, what it really is about. Certain things where I, I, it has to be done exactly that way. 
um, without any errors. But then there are some things as well, you know, close one eye, that's fine. Because it, if you keep thinking that it has to be done this way and if you can't, it's just, like I said, it's going to drive you out of your mind. So there's some things where we learn to close our eye a little bit and that just helps us get along with life a little bit more easier. Yeah, I, I like that balance. thinking. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's a good, a good balance. balance. Very, very yeah. true. It's, it's a very good balance because um, you're a public figure and also your inspiration <laughs> you know, has set like, so many examples because I'm sure you feel the pressure to be like, like um, live up to others' expectations. So you have to be like a good example all the time. Because of I that, so try. probably the perfectionist come try. in, you know. But but that's that's good. You you live a very balanced life. That's important. I try. I try to. <laughs> I I remember there was one. Um, once I heard your your interview before. You were mentioning confidence is not cockiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I remember that. <laughs> yeah. So um, how did that mm -hmm. come about? Uh, I, I, I think this one I attribute very much to, to my coach back home in Malaysia. Um, my coach back home in Malaysia, the head coach of Sunway, uh, Harry, and he always told me that no matter where you get to, you always have to stay humble and, you know, everybody is in the same level as you. You don't look down at anyone uh, because you were, you were at that level at some point. So for me, I, I took that very close to my heart and I, I, I tried my best to, to stay true to that. And um, at any moment that, that that's there, I, I just try to lay low as much as I can. Um, and yeah, just keep a low-key profile, I guess. <laughs> Have you ever been like really cocky or boastful, you think? Were there like once? <laughs> I not that I can recall. I hope, I really hope not. Uh, to me, if, you know, especially if people are always talking about you and you just want to up them one game. To me, I, I just tell myself, you know what, that's fine. Just let them talk. It's fine. Just doesn't mean anything. Let them say what they want to say. Just keep quiet. Take the high road, that kind of thing. Right, right. Yeah. right. You know, you are actually, um, with, your, with your experience and also your exposure, I, I think you are the one of the most humble, seriously, most humble person that I've ever met in my life. It's always thank down you, to earth. It's, it's, it's really, really um, uh, very you. easy to get along. I think, I think that's, that's, that's really a very big achievement and so an inspiration. You know, that's, that's a very good example. But then, but then at the same time, how do you maintain that confidence? Believe in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the confidence I, I, I think especially if, if it's more specific to uh, your perhaps your profession or what you do uh, as long as you know that you've gone through the training or whatever knowledge that you have and you know you've done it right just stick to that and don't doubt yourself so confidence doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be right but um, it just, it's just a, a sense of believing in what you do. Yeah. And, and what's important as well is because, like I say, this doesn't mean you're being right. You have to learn to accept that you're wrong sometimes. So what do you do when you're wrong? When you realize you're wrong? When you realize you're wrong, you, the, the first step is to accept that you're wrong. Um, and, you know, if it's something to do with someone else, then... If it's if an apology is needed, you you should own up to whatever you've done and say sorry or however make up for it. And uh, the next important thing is to learn from it. Right, right. That's that's we learn from mistakes. That's actually a very brave move. Although you no, know, it may f seems to be weak, but it's actually very very brave yeah. to to accept that. But then um, I just want to know, uh, maybe I should mm -hmm. actually call you Coach Julian. Because you are, I know you're <laughs> running your, your skating uh, academy. You, can you, yes, can you, I try. How, you, you have a very strong uh, will as we were, we were saying that. And how, how does your belief and your experience, how do you actually apply that in your academy? Um, so my, my, my style of, of coaching and how I, I would like to, how I envision it to be like is to share my experience that I have gone through uh, 
um, so that my skaters do not have to go through the same or similar struggles that I went through, um, thereby saving them some time in their journey, not making the same mistakes and waste money, waste time and all that. And also, I feel that um, I, I try to, to just relate certain things um, as a skater. So instead of being one, a coach to a skater, it's more or less a skater to a skater sharing the techniques, the experience, the feeling of a certain jump, that kind of thing. Um, because, I mean, sometimes it's it's hard for the skater to feel it, but coming, let's say that I'm uh, lucky enough to have the experience of a certain jump, I'm able to describe it in a certain way that maybe a skater can relate to. So you actually share yeah. your experience in that sense? Yeah, like how I felt when, let's say, I was learning this. And then I tell them how I felt, and hopefully, maybe they, they find some sort of um, some sort of feeling that is mutual, and they say, "Oh, you know what? I feel like that too. Good. So we're on the same page, and then we create an understanding. Then, and then we work together to achieve whatever their goal is." Are you a tough coach? <laughs> I think that's a question to ask my students. <laughs> <laughs> Were you tough on yourself? I I was. I think yeah. I when I was training. I, I never said no to my coach. Right. No matter if it's if I know at the end of the day I'm going to be super tired or I'm dead, I just said okay, sure, and then I just go did it. And because I know in the end it's it feels bad or feels tired now, but it will it will pay off. Right. So it's still the objective that's very clear, and you want to move towards that direction then. Yeah, we just need a push from someone else to, to go further as well. <laughs> you're right, right, right. And you're the coach now is to, to push the next person. Are you trying to yeah. train the next uh, uh, Malaysian figure to be... Uh, I, I hope so. I <laughs> yeah. hope so. I mean, we have a lot of talent back home. Um, and, and hopefully with the right facilities, the right guidance, uh, I think our skaters will be able to go far. Right. That's for sure. Right. I think Malaysia's uh, figure skating skin is different from where you were because at least we have another coach that has been there, done that. <laughs> but moving forward for <laughs> I, I yourself... I hope so, I hope so. <laughs> moving forward for yourself, are you like aiming for the next Olympics? Um, unfortunately, I think with the next Olympics, it's, it's, very, it's very soon actually. The next Olympics is in, say, it's in March. In right. February actually, yeah, next right. year. Right. So let's... let's uh, yeah, very, very soon. And, and the qualifying has already taken place there's only one qualifying competition left which is in Germany right, uh, and right. because of the pandemic so many right. things have been uncertain I uh, haven't been able to train much as well so mm -hmm. um, realistically speaking most likely not for the next Olympics yeah unfortunately right, right. and uh, on your personal basis are you like um, any plans for forming your family very soon <laughs> <laughs> Following my own family, wow. Yes. Um, I think at this day and age, is, uh, well, to me at least, I think it's still a bit young for that. Right. Um, let's let's see. I, I, I think definitely I have to be a little bit more stable with, with everything. Um, once everything is a bit more settled, then maybe only I can start thinking about that. But for now, I think we just work hard at this point of time and uh, hopefully the future will be good. Okay, I think that's great. Is there any like a piece of uh, take-home advice to share with our viewers? You know, while we celebrate this global wellness day. <laughs> um, you know, I think I think it's very important for us to stay true to who we are and what we want to do. Um, talking about mental wellness as well is, is very important. I find, especially with um, all these lockdowns or stay-at-home orders, uh, some of us might struggle with it. And it's good to talk to someone. It's whether it's a friend, or family, because uh, we have to realize that we're not the only ones who feel that way. I think a lot of us probably feel the same way. And it's good just to share. You know, sometimes just by talking, you end up joking around, and it makes you feel better already. So, uh, yeah, speak speak to people. Don't keep it to yourself. I think that's very important. Right, right, right. And um, of course, it's really good talking to you, speaking to you. And uh, so I think, thank you so much for your time, Julian. And um, thank you. such a selfless sharing today because uh, it's been such a great pleasure to have you. And um, I think it's getting pretty late at your, at your place now. <laughs>
But then, uh, of, course, <laughs> of course, we want to urge the, the viewers, uh, happy Global Wellness Day this year, and um, stay tuned, everybody. So we just wish um, all the best to Julian and, of course, all our viewers here. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you had a good time listening to Julian's story and be inspired by him just like I did. When I was talking and listening to this humble and hardworking young man, I saw a diamond. A diamond that sparkles and shines through because of pressure. So instead of breaking down or tearing up when he was facing challenges, he took on the challenge, changed it into his asset and march forward. That was very inspirational to me. And for anyone that's watching or listening, if you are facing any kind of unhappiness or hardship or challenges, big or small, at this moment of your life, please do not give up. We have to believe that help is always around. We just need to take one baby step at a time, take on the challenge, face the pressure, because pressure creates diamond. So while we celebrate the Global Wellness Day this 2021 with the theme, protecting our mental wellness, let us continue to ponder upon building a mental resilience at any time, in good times or in bad times. And I wish everybody all the best, and I'll see you at the sparkling end. Happy Global Wellness Day, everyone. Thank you and goodbye.